uh, let's stretch ourselves as uh, our physical bodies as the Lord will stretch us spiritually. Let's read this portion before we ask God to help us understand it. Here we go. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation, fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Oh, may it be, O oh God. May we even now, uh, in obedience to you, because therefore, uh, because of what was done for us in the Messiah, in his emptying himself, uh, in all humility, taking the form of a servant and dying uh, for our sins in such an awful death. Uh, may his humility uh, be replicated in our lives, even as we learn that through this matter, you help us to grow into uh, his likeness and fulfill the original design of being in the image of God. So we pray that the Holy Spirit would continue this holy and sanctifying process, uh, separating us unto God, living out the life of God. Help us to grow in the truth of it all. For it's in Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Please be seated if you will. Uh, I'm taking up from where we left off last week. Uh, and uh, last week we took a rather in-depth look at a few words, quite frankly, because of the nature of the scripture. Uh, the, the fact that God put his Truth in writing necessitates study. Uh, he expects you to study the words uh, because they contain the very truth for our lives and eternally. And so as we took a look last week, we saw the word therefore kicks it all off and reminds us of God's great love for us in the Messiah who humbled himself as I prayed. As the scripture noted, uh, in order to provide a great an eternal salvation as a free gift, as a free gift. You say, why would he do that? Because he loves you so much because of his love. Therefore, simple faith, simple trust, uh, relying on what God has done for you and Yeshua, and therefore you become uh, his children. Uh, what a salvation, not only delivering us from the wrath of God, which would be more than enough, uh, but bringing us into an eternal relationship with himself because of his great love for us, just like when we came out of Egypt, delivering us from the judgments on Egypt were good enough, not for God. He wanted to bring us out into a relationship we might live for him in his presence. Uh, so it's all typified in that regard and magnified in the life of Yeshua through us. And so this is the great delight of our souls. Uh, it's just for those who are wise on these matters, it is absolutely stunning. Uh, that's why the scriptures read the way they do. First John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. Uh, and, and so, because of all this, there's great love for you, and just like for your children and grandchildren accordingly. Uh, all you want is for them to be blessed. You want your children to be blessed. How can they be blessed? And so as they grow, they learn these things uh, that to kind of enjoy the blessings, you grow uh, in the grace and knowledge of the Lord into his likeness. And the more you do that, the more blessed you are. You enjoy the very blessings you have in Messiah, etc. And so when we consider the growth pattern this portion brings up in the section of scripture uh, is intended by uh, Paul. Uh, to speak of the growth pattern, how we grow. And so, as we took a look last week, we just touched upon the fact uh, that to work out our salvation is to live out what God has worked into our life. You say, work into our life? What do you mean, work into our life? We had studied this, uh, chapter 1, verse 6 of this book, when it says, when confidence very thing, he who began a good work in you will perfect him to the day of Messiah Yeshua. And so he began a work in you when you came to faith in Yeshua, a work in you through the Holy Spirit. And so uh, our faith in him, if you have faith now, if you're a believer, you've already come to faith. Uh, you say, I haven't come to faith yet. Well, you want to first trust in him. Well, can't I just obey God? No, you're not 
enable, enable to, you're not empowered to. Uh, sin will stumble you, and you'll only be fear, being legalistic, thinking of the one good thing you did. I had, actually had such a great day back in 1984. It was a Tuesday. It was really good. I, I slept the whole day, so I was very righteous. Didn't, couldn't do one thing wrong. Didn't do anything right, but anyway. And so, uh, but once you're a believer, now your faith is manifested, may it is seen, uh, by your obedience to the word of God. You didn't realize by trusting in Messiah, you are obeying the word of God. He is the word of God. <laughs> and, and therefore we have to trust in him. You didn't know that because your own need probably brought you uh, to recognize your desperate uh, need for his salvation. So, in any case, and so in so doing, we grow in our relationship with God uh, as we trust and apply his word daily in our lives. And so, uh, like newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word uh, that you may grow uh, in your salvation. So as you desire the word of God like a baby, uh, you therefore grow accordingly in the Lord. And so, uh, by faith obedience, what we mean by that, it's not just, just activities and doing stuff. It always reflects, activity for godly people reflects attitude. It reflects a faithful a a trust in the Lord, your attitude. And so, uh, all our activity demonstrates uh, his activity. By the way, Yeshua's activity demonstrated his attitude. Uh, his humility was seen in his activity. And so, uh, in the very same way, faith obedience does the same thing, a humble attitude like Yeshua, reverently yielding ourself uh, to obeying his word to his glory. And so, as we take a look at this portion of scripture, we'll talk about being fat. You say, am I going to feel judged? No, you will feel encouraged, because the question I have, are you fat enough? You may not be fat enough, and all you non-fat people, you want, to take, you want to listen very carefully to this teaching from the Word of God. And so he wants you fat, spiritually fat. What do you think I was talking about, huh? And so we want to learn about how to become spiritually fat. Okay. And so when we think about our humble process uh, uh, for progress, going from fat, fatter to fattest, uh, you say, this is like the craziest place I've ever been in. I never, what in the world, you know, who invited me here? Uh, so when we think about this, we're going to take a look at the simple outline we have in your bulletin. Take notes, follow along accordingly. So we work out our salvation obediently, the humble activity for growth, reverently, the humble attitude for growth, uh, and then finally, cooperatively, the humble act actuality, what it really looks like uh, for growth. And so this week will be number two. We dealt with number one last week. Let's move it right ahead. And so as we take a look and now the, uh, on the fact, work out your salvation reverently, the humble attitude for growth, the scripture says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You notice the letters I have, uh, F-A-T, okay. Some of you can breathe a sigh of relief. Uh, so we want to understand what the scripture is saying here. And we see in the Tanakh quite often, it says, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice, and rejoice with trembling. Fear and trembling was a normative phrase in the first century. Uh, it had to do with having a reverent attitude. Uh, it was taught in the first century amongst all the Bible believers, uh, most of them were Jewish at the time, uh, that it had to do, talk, they talked quite a bit about uh, the Avot, the fathers, how they all served God with fear and trembling. What did that mean? It, and they say, well, it meant that they did not trust in their own works. So that could give you an idea of how Paul is using it in this regard. That having a right attitude is going to be that you're not trusting in your own works accordingly. And so it's used that way uh, in throughout the New Covenant as well. And so as we talk about working out, we had mentioned this before, manifesting salvation, living it out, living out the life and love of Yeshua. This is awesome, awesome. But we forget what the word awesome means because we use it rather commonly as terrific and great, uh, but it has to do with awe, having a holy awe of God. And so when you have a holy awe, a reverential awe, of God. This is the holy of holies of fat, fear and trembling service. And when we take a look at the Tanakh, look at the Hebrew scriptures, we see that the closer to the holy of holies, 
that the Kohanim, the priests, served, the closer to the Holy of Holies they served, the more circumspectly they walked. Uh, very sensitive to the holiness of God. And for some of us, it's like strange ideas. Uh, many of us may have been taught as young believers, uh, he loves you so much that God's your pal. He's kind of the guy you can just hang with. He'll never judge you. You can use any language you want. He doesn't care. You can eat, drink, smoke, shoot, snort anything you want. God doesn't care. He's like your big buddy in the sky. He's a holy God. He's a holy God. Uh, sin is just as offensive to him now as it was way long time ago. Uh, he never got used to it. He still blushes, uh, etc., and is offended by uh, evil talk and all these kind of things. So we may say it's just the way it goes, you know. No, it's not slice of life. It's a slice of sin. Beware of, of, of diminishing the holiness of God. Uh, this will only bring corruption to your soul and be contrary to what the Bible actually teaches here about the wonderful and glorious and joyous relationship of love we have with our, our Lord. We have to be careful of diminishing it down to some big buddy in the sky kind of thing. And so when he talks about walking in the spirit, uh, we talk about that in our community. Our discipleship goes through being spirit-filled, that you might have the power of the Holy Spirit. You say, what do I need that for? I'm glad you brought that up. There's nothing God has asked of any believer that can be done to his glory apart from the power of the Holy Spirit. Everything we do is supernatural. When we pray, we must pray in the Spirit. That means emptying ourselves of self and glorifying Yeshua in all humility. And when we serve one another, as and many people in this community are just, we have great servants in this congregation, it just blesses me all the time. Uh, but we do that by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, whether it's handing out bulletins or cutting bagels or the worship team, you say, well, they've just got a lot of good skills. Uh, they shouldn't be in a worship team if it's based on skill. It has to do with being a worship leader. And they need to be filled with the Spirit and be worshipers indeed. And so as we consider the very matter of what our life is all about, being filled with the Holy Spirit, walking in the Spirit as such, Galatians 5.16, this has to do with your soul, that's where fear takes place, uh, and body, that's where the trembling takes place. It's a whole person kind of approach to walking with the Lord. Uh, all of this is overwhelmingly impacted by the holy presence of the living God. And you say, well, I don't find that to be all that moving. Yeah, well, the immature, you can always tell the immature. You know, uh, uh, some of the immature, they had a very hard morning. Uh, and it's been a rough day. They got up so early to play. And now they're all tuckered out. And worship is a time for sleeping. And so, yeah, yeah that's what we expect from the immature. We're not disappointed. But for the mature... They understand the very truth of who their God is and honor him uh, in their lives, in their souls, uh, with everything they got going for them as they live their life uh, in, in the presence of a living God, uh, etc. And so when we consider this matter and get into the text, uh, sa salvation is a sanctifying process. Let me just explain this if I might. This is going to be a little tech for those who when you hear like nerdy, techy kind of things, you immediately go to sleep, this is your cue to go to sleep. Okay, you're doing good, yeah. Uh, and so I'll wake you up when the, when, when, when the time is right. And so what happens when you come to personal faith in Messiah, you receive a salvation that is not only delivering you from ju eternal judgment, but into a relationship with God. Well, being delivered into a relationship with God, the Bible calls sanctification or being set apart. You're set apart unto God. And as you grow, uh, you grow in Messiah, uh, and you're set apart more and more and more and more. You say, well, I, do I have to get saved by that? No, you're already saved. That happened. But you grow into who you are. And so you say, well, I, I don't understand. What does that mean? Uh, I'm going to ask uh, for, uh, let's see, uh, Dimitri. 
you're a likely candidate. Um, uh, you are uh, a man, right? Uh, uh, when did you become a male? You always were a male. He was always a male. He was born a male. Well, <laughs> interesting kind of counterintuitive these days. But nonetheless, he was born a male. Uh, you say, yeah. He did not become a male when he became a man. He was already a male. He grew into being a male, and as maturity, we call him a man. Not everyone who's a male we call a man. Uh, and so the maturity is what we're talking about. We grow into this maturity as children of God. They become the men and women of God. That's what he means when he talks about sanctification of the Bible. Uh, you are actually a child of God right from the outset, and you grow into that uh, in the sanctification, the setting apart that God has for you. And that's what this whole section of Scripture is about as we grow into the, the very process of growth uh, in this matter. And so when we walk in the Spirit consistently, you're going to grow fat. You say, hold on a second. What do you mean? Well, I understand how you think of being fat. I, I, have the same, I have the same prayer problems as you do. I'm always praying that you know, God would not only be, give the increase, but God would give the decrease. <laughs> oh, Lord, I pray you'll give the decrease. <laughs> but nonetheless, when it comes to spiritual matters, we got to fatten up in light of fear and trembling, uh, this being an attitude that we grow into as we get closer and closer uh, to the holy of holies, as we mature into the very presence of the living God, conformed to the image of the Son, transformed by the renewing of our mind to the fullness and stature of the Son of God. And so this uh, idea of fat service is by grace. Everything is by grace, as we're going to see in a moment, and always to his glory as we seek to honor him in our time, our talent, our treasure, whatever we got going for us. And so this messianic, this messianic maturity and spirituality. You say, well, I thought coming to a messianic congregation, I'd just say a few things in Hebrew. It doesn't help. I've been using Hebrew my whole life. It didn't do me one bit of good. It's only noting the God of the Hebrews that made the difference. Uh, he's not impressed with language. It's a heart issue for God. And so fear and trembling as we live before him in this regard. And so uh, this is what we do. You say, well, I'm not there at all. Well, we encourage you to repent, turn from your negative attitudes about Bible and God, and turn to God, uh, and revere him, and get fat with the rest of us here. And so uh, salvation also sanctifies our ineptitude, our weak aptitude, our inability to honor him. Uh, we, you know, because of sin, all of us have problems. You know, it says walk in the Lord. We probably stumble all the time over things. And so uh, this trembling deals with that aspect of it uh, because in your soul, in the inner immaterial part of you, uh, spiritually you are connected with God through the Holy Spirit by your spirit, which then ministers in your soul, which has to do with your mind, how you think, with your emotions, what you feel like at different times, uh, and uh, with your volition, whether you're willful or you know, weak-willed, whatever you may be. But nonetheless, the Spirit of God ministers through your soul, and you therefore have reverential fear, and that's going to be seen in how you use your body, as your body now catches up uh, to honoring the Lord as well. And so the Bible uses this idea. In fact, when we take a look at the Scripture, uh, we recognize, you know, it says uh, in Isaiah 66, twice it says there, I tremble at his word. What's that mean? Every time I read the Bible, it's the holy word of God. Do you ever think about that? I, it's your nourishment, certainly, for your soul. It's the holy word of God. We tremble at his word, uh, that we might honor him, not only in the reading, but in the application, living it out. It's the holy word of God for our life, and there's a lamp unto our feet. Uh, it, it guides us in the direction to grow in light of who he is in a life set apart unto him. We might serve the Lord with joy accordingly, even as I have the scriptures up there. And so uh, the issue uh, of these matters, you say, well, what's going on? I've been to, mostly I, I have a, a non-fat household. We're fat-free, as a matter of fact. You say, what does that mean? We don't even talk about God. Uh, we, you know, we have a Bible on the table for visitors to think we got something going, but our TV shows are what we're on the internet with and music we listen to and whatever we talk about has nothing to do with God. We are totally non-fat. 
We are a fat-free household. Well, my heart breaks for you. You're an unblessed household. You're an unblessed household. You say, well, I, I, what do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, well, you have to appreciate the way the Bible reads on these things. When you're not walking in the Spirit of God, and not honoring Yeshua with your life, not glorifying Him in your heart and elsewhere, and so oh, that's, uh, that's a wrong and faithless attitude towards God. And so, uh, and, and, you, and if you come to a congregation like this, you know, everyone who joins the congregation and remains in active membership, uh, they are serving the Lord. And if you don't remain in active membership, you're removed from active status. You say, what? What? What kind of crazy place you got here? Yeah, well, we have a functioning congregation, and the, and the members are, are the functioning members of the body. We all serve together. This is what we do, uh, and we do it with a whole heart. We do it in fear and trembling before the Lord. Uh, and if you're not used to that kind of thing, you can say, oh, well, most places they're just happy I showed up. Well, I'm thrilled you showed up. Uh, a little shocked, but delighted nonetheless. And trust that you'll be somehow blessed by all of this. But we want to understand uh, that you're not doing God some favor by serving him. Like, oh my goodness, I have to hand out bulletins to visitors. Ah, wish I could do something important, like play harmonica or something like that. No, no, uh, every part of the body serves a purpose and it's, it has to do with the one we serve. That's what makes our service important. Our service is not important by what we do, but for who we serve. Right. That's right. What we do is really unimportant. Even if I'm up here yammering away about the Bible, uh, relatively speaking, uh, the big deal is God. It has nothing to do with my, my service is because he's a great God, and I want to honor him in whatever I do. And you parents, as you raise your children, it's the honor of God. Uh, you said, but the kids are not, you know, following through. That's their business. That, that's their business. But you provided holy service unto the Lord, and God is well pleased with your holy, holy service, regardless of your children not picking up on, on the idea. That's all right. We understand these things. Hopefully they'll come around. Uh, but we want to understand as well, uh, we're not doing God some favor by serving him. It's a great privilege to honor his name in all that we do. Uh, and some people there, you know, they get resentful. When you join this congregation, if you're going to be an active member in our community, besides serving, you tithe. You say, what? What a doubly bad place to be in. You have to serve and tithe. I mean, good grief, bad enough, you know, you don't even understand that time is money, and therefore people pay me good money for what the work I do, and you want me to serve for nothing, and then on top of that, you want me to give money to this place as well? You're not giving money to this place, and your service isn't to this place. It's all for the Lord. It's all for the Lord. <laughs> And if you don't see it that way, this is really not the place for you. <laughs> yeah. And so you know, we really want the people to be part. This is your congregation. So therefore, we serve him with all that we have to the glory of his name and non fat is unblessed carnality accordingly. And so uh, service is not people-pleasing or self-serving. That may be the only motivation some, most people have in life. You know, am I going to get something out of the deal? And will other people appreciate me? Uh, you, know, you know, by, by doing something. And so that's something that the Bible doesn't speak to. It, it, it wants that mortified, undermined, torn up. Uh, but fat service has to do with honoring the Lord in all ways. And so this has to do uh, with trusting Yeshua uh, and distrusting ourselves. And so just as was understood uh, in, in the bib biblical communities all along, you understand fear and trembling, we don't trust ourselves. We don't trust in our, we don't trust in our works. We don't trust we don't trust ourselves. The more mature you are, the less you trust yourself. Watch. Let's see how the congregation responds to this. You ready? He must increase, and we must decrease. More of Yeshua, less of me. I trust myself less and less. And that's what our children need to see. Our children need to see the parents having reverential service so they know how to parent, how to adult, how to live out the life as they honor the Lord. Uh, as opposed to life being about you. It's about the Lord. And that's what our homes need to be, microcosms of our community. And we can't be any stronger than the families that make up our community here. And so all the selfish 
all this kind of stuff, uh, without fear, if you don't have a fear of the Lord or reverence for the holy God, it means you're self-centered and unwise. Unwise? What is the beginning of wisdom? Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you don't have a reverence for God, you're unwise. I don't care how educated you are. You're unwise in the things of God and the things that count, and your children know it quite well. And so they also, when you're not trembling, therefore you're arrogant, unaware. Uh, your whole body is living a different life. And so selfish service, it just stinks to high heaven. And fat service is a life set apart unto God as a pleasing aroma to his eternal glory. Reverential. So ask yourself, I want you, when you go home, I want you to pray with your spouse Pray with your children. Uh, do we have uh, an ever-increasingly fat home? Do we have a place uh, that is our, is our home God's home? Uh, and therefore, we're at home and we're in his home kind of thing. Uh, he's preparing a place for us as well. And so I want you to pray about this, talk about this amongst yourselves. Uh, and for those who are thinking about getting married, this is the kind of stuff you talk about. What kind of home will we have, etc. This is the testimony of our lives accordingly. And so uh, when we come now uh, to the next portion, one builds on the other. Everything he's been saying, the whole issue of obedience to God, not to Paul. No one was obedient to Paul. It was obedience to God because of a relationship with God. And therefore, that leads to understanding, as we saw, the reverence to God, which actually, which is, you know, seen in our right attitude there, how we serve him obediently. Uh, and now we're going to take a look at the last aspect, which is the most prof one of the more profound verses in the Bible. Uh, for those who, uh, who study this, it'll really blow your minds if you study it well. And so we're going to take a look. Uh, it says, work out your salvation cooperatively, the humble actual, how it really takes place, what really is happening, what really is going on here. And this is the kind of thing that we need to understand to appreciate uh, what it's all about, how I, we grow in the Lord and what it means. For our salvation was totally, it's just such a work of grace, nothing on our part whatsoever. And even now, as we grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord, it's always the power of God has nothing to do with my flesh or my works or anything about me. This is why we need to be filled with Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. And understand his power and his working, as this verse brings out. And so, for it is God who is at work at you. And so our service is seeing God at work in us. When he began a good work in you, he is now working out through you, as we see now. Uh, God is working his great power through This is how we actually get it done. When we yield it uh, to him, filled with Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Empowered by the Lord's, we're yielded to Yeshua and obeying his word. The Holy Spirit finds us manageable. We're in compliance to him. And then he can work through our life to be kind and caring when we feel like being selfish. Uh, to be bold and strong when we feel like, oh, I can get in trouble if I, if I share the good news with people or something like that. And so this is work of the Holy Spirit in our life when we yielded. Uh, in Messiah. And so all of this uh, brings us to the one who's actually doing the work here. <laughs> who's actually doing the work in my life. And so we work our salvation by complying with the Holy Spirit who's working in and through us. And so this is the Spirit-filled life. Uh, this is what uh, the, the, all the scriptures speak of as we consider this matter. Or without being yielded uh, to uh, Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Uh, what's, his, what's the Spirit's first name? Holy. You know, keep that in mind. Uh, and so without yielding this to him, the Messianic faith is just dead religion. It's another dead religion. Deal with rules, rituals, all kinds of silly things have nothing to do with what the Bible teaches. And so uh, we want to understand the whole truth has to do with the life of God and that we receive by faith in Yeshua, that we live out as we yield ourselves to him and obey and follow his word by his power. And so, uh, create in his image and his likeness uh, to relate to him that we might represent him, that our worship might produce our witness to him. 
And so as we get through the text, uh, why do I have to be, uh, in, why reverence, why, why, why do I have to fear and trembling, fear and, why? Because he says, for it is God. Because it's God at work in you. Because it's the holy God of the universe. It's the God who's the creator of things that scientists can't even find yet. The whole creator of the whole universe is also the redeemer. Because it's God. That's why we serve with reverence and confidence in light of who he is. And so in the Tadak uh, Hebrew scriptures, uh, we see that uh, the Spirit of God came upon uh, believers, but as Yeshua prophesied uh, in uh, John 14, 17, that following his death and resurrection and ascension, the Spirit of God be poured out to indwell believers. Uh, so as we rely on the Holy Spirit, uh, the Spirit's residing presence, this is what produces our reverence. It's the Holy Spirit that brings us into holiness. Uh, I'm shooting for happiness. What's the congregation? Uh, excuse me, I, I, I obviously came to the wrong place. Uh, is there a congregation that preaches more on happiness than holiness? Uh, you know, I, got, I, really, I appreciate that, but where, where is that? Well, understand happiness is the byproduct of holiness. The fruit of the Spirit is joy. It's a fruit. It's a consequence. It's a byproduct of the root of the Spirit that is abiding in Yeshua, that is looking to Yeshua, that is trusting in Yeshua, that is following Yeshua. This is where the joyous life comes from as a fruit, as a result of living for the Lord and honoring Him. And living for the Lord and honoring Him is called holy living. You say, but don't holy people look sad? Well, there's some people that just enjoy being sad. It's a free country. But don't blame God for that. No, uh, we are very happy, joyous people because what the Lord has done for us, who he is, and how we get to work with him and, and honor him and glorify his name. It's all like good stuff for all of us. And so when we consider the matter, for it's God who is at work in you. Well, I thought I was working. Hold on a second. Boy, religion is so confusing, you know. I thought I was to work out my salvation. I mean, Paul just said that a few words ago. Did he, it's got like senior moment, forgets what he just said, and now has to kind of contradict. No, he's not contradicting himself. He's letting us know how we work out our salvation in fear and trembling because it's God at work in you. That's how we do it. We do that because it's the power of the Holy Spirit. We rely on him, yield in him, and obey him. And therefore, he gives us what we need to obey him, follow him. Gives us everything we need. It's like one-stop shopping. It's really a kind of a very cost-effective and efficient way of doing things. One God, no problem. Uh, so we want to appreciate what uh, the Bible says here. You say, what do you mean it's God at work? See, this is the secret of uh, Messiah, the Son of God. This is his secret that we get to live out. The secret of his life. We get to live out his life. How did he do that? Well, we saw in our study uh, earlier in this chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. Remember, have this attitude in you that was also in Messiah Yeshua. He did not regard equality with God. Didn't regard any of those things we grasped, we held on to, but emptied himself. The secret is in emptying yourself of your own prerogatives, your own interests, your own preferences, your own lusts, your own fears, all those things that maybe you think of your fear as wisdom. You know, oh, I know what to be afraid of. So, no, that's not wisdom. It's corrupting your soul. Uh, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. And therefore, trusting God is the wisest, most secure thing to do with your life. And so he emptied himself. And in total compliance to the spirit, uh, you say, well, what do you mean? Yeah, he emptied himself, all his divine prerogatives, and was empowered, empowered to obey the word of God, uh, just as we are. This is the work of God uh, through Yeshua, the Messiah, who emptied himself, all his divine prerogatives, and therefore would fill perfectly with the Holy Spirit, because he yielded himself perfectly. This is spiritual synergy. You say, well, what do you mean? Yeah, this is where we're cooperating, compliant, yielded to the Holy Spirit. 
Uh, and then he, by our yieldingness, our faith, simple faith and trust, yieldingness, simple faith and trust, is now doing a work as we follow, obey, and trust the Lord. A spiritual synergy takes place. And so, uh, in the same way in Yeshua, we empty ourselves of, our, of all our preferences, uh, all these kind of things. Oh, I wish we had a longer spring and a shorter summer. Yeah, you might as well, you know, just uh, move back north. Oh, I forgot the winters. Okay, yeah. But it's always something to complain about. How many people always think it's a free country? I have a lot to complain about. Raise your hand. Yeah, you're not going to like next week's sermon at all. Uh, but nonetheless, let's see what the scripture says here. And so say, who is at work in you? Uh, so this has to do with the life we now live as we are yielded uh, in Yeshua and the Holy Spirit uh, therefore empowers us to live out the life and love of Yeshua as we follow the word of God. Uh, the very truth of scripture, who is Yeshua. Yeshua is the truth of scripture uh, incarnate. And so it's, not, it's certainly not your power. God never expected it to be. Adam and Eve were created to rely on God. Uh, it's when they stopped relying on God, they failed. It's when they stopped following God's word, uh, etc. This is when they failed. Uh, they were created weak, just like you. Created weak, just like you. And you say, well, well what do you mean? So, yeah, they were created weak because their power would come from relying on God, not themselves. It wasn't sin that made them weak. It weakened them further, but no, it corrupted them. But they were created, depend on God. And so when you depend on God, this is what's going to be seen as God works through you. All that you have uh, will be blessed of him as you serve him in various capacities, and also whether at job, going to school, at home, wherever it may be. It's God at work in you. This imports, uh, imparts uh, the spiritual service and growth. Uh, so when you're not being obedient in regards to what the Bible says here, uh, and you're not, therefore, not obedient working out your salvation as the Bible describes here, really what's going on, and you don't realize it, because what it feels like to you is, I'm just doing what I normally do. I'm just doing the same thing, you know? It's not Shabbat, so I can do the same thing. I can do, you know, my thing here, just be who I am. Doesn't God want me to be just who I am? You know, there's forgiveness for who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, God will forgive you. Uh, but the idea is, he wants you to grow into Messiah. And your personality will not change, it will mature. He loves who you are in Messiah, you'll enjoy the blessings of God. And so, uh, when you are uh, yielded, this is what happens. But if you're not yielded, what it actually is going on, though it seems natural, ordinary, you know, all the things I naturally, the, the TV shows I naturally watch, the sporting events I naturally get into, uh, the various music I naturally listen to, you know, etc. All that stuff there, what's actually going on when you're not yielded, Lord, you are resisting him. You're grieving and quenching the Holy Spirit. And this is reinforcing reinforcing our selfishness. It's reinforcing all the things that keep us immature, unblessed, and defeated, spiritually speaking. Uh, because as I have up there, just one note, uh, we surrender all to the Lord of all. Because Yeshua taught us, whoever wants to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life because of me will find it. So understand what, the, what Yeshua taught us. We empty ourselves so we may be filled with Ruach HaKodesh and live out the life to our children and our children's children accordingly. And so as we consider this last aspect, uh, both to will and to work for his good pleasure, his good, what in the world pleases the Lord? What is God's good pleasure? What is his good will, uh, as the scripture would define it, the word that's used there, his good will, his good pleasure? What is that? And his purpose for your life, the purpose for our life, the purpose for our community and each of our families. Uh, this, and so we have to be fulfilling all of these things, living it out. You say, well, what are you talking about? Let's understand what his good pleasure is, what his will is. Uh, simply put, it's Yeshua. Yeshua is God's good pleasure. Yeshua is God's good will for humanity. This is exactly what the angels tried to fill us in on at his birth in Luke 2.14. Uh, when they sang out, glory to God in the highest. He is the glory to God in the highest. 
Uh, he is peace on earth. He is the Prince of Peace. He is peace on earth. He's peace in your family. He's peace in your heart. He's peace with God. And he is, as, this, as that verse continues, he is goodwill towards men. He is God's goodwill. God shows himself to be on your side. He's on your side. He cares about you. Yeshua is God's goodwill. This word goodwill, that's the same word for good pleasure in the original language. And so Yeshua is God's goodwill to humanity who is now revealed by his working in us as you faithfully work out your salvation. He is God's witness through you to the world. You know, I love that song. It's, a pre, it's trending pretty well these days, you know, uh, that they may see you. Uh, who heard that song, that worship song, that they might see you in what I sing and all I say and do? You familiar with that? You know, that's, that's our prayer, you know, that they might see him in all we do, that we would be kind of uh, invisible, and that he might get the glory. It's all about him. And so we submit to his will. We submit to his will uh, for his good pleasure. You'll notice it says there about the Lord, what he does. This is, you know, is God at work in you? Is God at work in you both to will and to work? To will and to work. First comes the will. Do you see that? Then comes the work. You got that? First is God's will, what he wants to do, then the outworking of that will. So also in your life. Your willingness is your faith as you yield to him. Faith in him. Your willingness precedes your working out. This is how working out becomes almost all natural, so to speak, uh, if you are willing and yielded uh, to him. Have faith in him, relying upon him. Then all of a sudden, the life you're living out seems like, well, duh, of course. Of course, I'm not going to make an idolatry out of my money out of my job or my family. I'm going to trust the Lord and honor the Lord, of course, hello. Uh, but when you're unwilling, resistant to him, uh, this is exactly uh, when you're not going to be working out uh, and you don't have a witness. So willingness precedes the working out of his witness to all you do and possess and whatever you got going for yourself. And so all of this matter, if you're unwilling to surrender to Yeshua, what, you may want to make a little list to yourself for prayer. Uh, that you might have a little doggy bag to go home and pray with your family about. What in our life have we not surrendered to him? Have we not yielded to him? Is there something about our time uh, that we kind of, oh no, he can have Shabbat morning, uh, but no, no, I'm telling you right now, Wednesday night, you know, uh, basketball finals, gonna, please, you know, I'll get holy again after the finals and somehow... Be careful. Uh, you don't understand what you're doing to your soul. Maybe it's your talents and your abilities, uh, not wanting to serve him with who you are, or your treasure, uh, or your thought life. You think that somehow your thought life is your private domain. God hears your thoughts like you can hear words uh, or see uh, words. Uh, but nonetheless, your relationships, all, what have you not surrendered, yielded to him? Where are you not yielded in your will? What are you unwilling about? What are you resisting the Holy Spirit? Uh, this is what, if you resist him, you're not going to grow. Uh, you're going to be stunting your growth. And there are some believers who've been believers 25 years and more who are like babies, who are like little children spiritually, you know? Uh, they can't grip the sword of the spirit like a little baby holding on and knock it out of their hand by any situation that occurs. Why? They haven't yielded these areas. They're unyielded. They're resistant. Uh, and therefore, they're not blessed. Uh, they're struggling with a constant immaturity and defeated lives. So he began to work and you will perfect it if you're yielded. Just yield to him. That's faith. The same faith. The very same faith that brought salvation by trusting in Yeshua. The same faith. Keep trusting Yeshua. It's the same faith. You know, it's the same faith. You, you, know, you become more faithful. Glory to God. But nonetheless, that's how it works. And so, uh, to will and to work. And so, uh, as we serve, he works out his good pleasure. Uh, this is Yeshua. Uh, the, Yeshua is salvation. He is uh, the very name, of course, but who he is. He is our salvation. Behold, God is my salvation. Uh, as we sing from Isaiah and elsewhere, uh, Exodus 15. And so Yeshua is our salvation. 
Uh, this is the salvation God worked in and now working through as we cooperate, as we yield, as we comply, as we surrender those areas, uh, those strongholds in our soul, strongholds of fear, strongholds of lust, strongholds of, uh, you know, uh, gossip as a social uh, choice, uh, all these kind of things, bring them to the Lord. Ask the Lord to help you. He'll help you uproot them. Forever the heavenly Father has not planted must be uprooted, Matthew 15, 13. And so the Holy Spirit, even through a teaching like this, wants to help you uproot those matters, uh, that they might demolish strongholds. This is the power of what God can do. Just ask him to help you. He's so delighted to bless you. Of course he will. But do not resist him with your selfishness and self-serving attitudes and behaviors uh, accordingly. And this is God's good pleasure uh, to live out his life, created in his image, uh, that we might represent him to others. You say, what do you mean? That's why the theme of the book of Philippians is to live is Messiah. We live him out. To live is Messiah. Live him out. And so this is, as, the, as Yeshua was sent, so he sends us. As he prayed, so we pray, not my will, your will be done. As he sent, uh, we see from John 20, 21, he came to his Talmudim uh, there in the upper room there where the doors were locked, they were frightened. He says, Shalom Aleichem, peace be unto you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And so also, we are his ambassadors. We testify of him. That's why I want you praying for the various planters that will be coming for this conference. They understand they are going to be setting up you know, communities of people who will be living out his life and his love as his testimony. They are the ambassadors for Messiah, making his appeal to each of us, begging people. And we beg you today, oh, be reconciled to God. Oh, come to know him. This is what we are about this side of heaven, to testify of his goodness and love for us. And so spiritual growth in Messiah is found in my willingness to work out. Make a little checklist. Where are you at? If you're not making a checklist, you may feel like I'm getting through the service unscathed. You know, no matter how much Nadler spoke about something that was relevant in my life, I didn't let it bother me. Well, we give you special bagels. We give you the stale bagels. Just let them know. Uh, I, I, I earned a stale bagel this week. Okay, they'll be glad to give you. And so prayerful uh, surrender. Uh, that's really good that people who, don't, who, have, who are hearing impaired laugh the loudest at my jokes. I've got to say that that is very impressive. And Catherine probably has a great sense of humor. I don't know how to work. Uh, prayerful surrender. How are you doing with that? Have you surrendered? A deeper repentance. Areas of your life to give to him. Uh, uh, kind of a scriptural abiding, following the word of God more and more. How are you doing there? Are you growing in those areas? He is increasing, you decreasing. Uh, practical obedience, the result of those matters in the scripture when you're yielded. And then sharing Messiah, living him out uh, in word and deed that others might know good news. And so it's not over till the fat lady sings. We know what fat means now, don't we? And so the question we might want to say is, but is our fat service over? And am I fat enough yet? And so ask yourself these questions. Let's get fatter by faith in Yeshua. Uh, by faith in Yeshua, obey God with a whole heart, even when there's no one else around. That's what we looked at last week. As we just took a look, by faith in Yeshua, revere the holy God who loves you and without whom you'd be unable to live, love, and serve, and glorify. Uh, and by faith in Yeshua, abiding in him bears much spiritual fruit and cooperating with Ruach joyously lives him out. Where are you at? Make a little checklist for yourself. Bring it to the Lord in prayer because the fat lady's about to sing. It's over. Let's pray. Avina, we bring our hearts before you. We, we are so thankful that you love us with an everlasting love. You love us at our worst, even when we're weak, even when we're resistant. You still love us. Thank you, Lord, for that. And thank you for not letting us get away with stuff. Uh, thank you for giving us a chastening when we try, uh, that we might grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord and be blessed even more. And so we ask, Lord, uh, for your blessing on us as a community. 
and as individuals too. There may be some here, Lord, who have not yet come to personal faith in you. Oh, draw them to yourself because you love them so dearly. And may they uh, just trust simply in Messiah. Simply place faith, reliance on what he has done, not what they can do. What he has done for them. And that by simple faith, they're able to then have eternal life, forgiveness of sins, and a relationship with the living God. Oh, bless accordingly. And Lord, for those who've come to know you, help us to grow uh, in our proper, uh, by faith, our proper attitudes as we mature, uh, having a reverential attitude to a holy God who loves us with everlasting love. We might revere you and, and bless your name and live out as a blessing to your name. Uh, and we might therefore live out Yeshua, his life and love as we empty ourselves and are filled with Ruach HaKodesh, filled with the Spirit of God. Oh, add your blessing, I pray, to our considerations. Uh, hear our hearts. Take a moment, if you will, of silent prayer. God is listening to your heart right now. If there's something you need to surrender to him, bring it to the Lord. Cast your cares upon him, your selfishness, your self-orientation, your self-attitudes and behaviors, whatever they may be. Bring it to the Lord. He hears your heart and wants to cleanse you uh, in Messiah's atonement that you might understand your full salvation that he has for you and that you might live it out to the glory of his name. I add your blessing to our considerations, we pray, O oh God, for it's in Yeshua's name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen.